Welcome to Fly Fishing in Arizona, Locally and Beyond, put on by Saddlebrook Fly Fishers Academy. I'm Linda Lyon, your host for today's session. We are fortunate to have two speakers today, Jeff Collins with 40 years of fly fishing and fly tying in Arizona. He lives in Tucson and he was a former president of Old Pueblo Trout Unlimited. He also enjoys float tube fishing and has a very popular with over 500 members Facebook group for those who share his passion. Mike Falkenberry has 35 years of fly fishing. He is an Arizona native, born in the White Mountains and lives in Queen Creek. He enjoys fishing a variety of moving waters from the Mogollon Rim to Southwest Montana. I have to tell you now that I failed to begin recording this presentation until about two thirds of the way through when I finally remembered. So I'm going to narrate the slides until we get to the point that our guest panelists uh, were recorded. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Good news in Arizona is our Arizona Game and Fish Department is pretty active in helping us enjoy our sport. There is a fishing license required in Arizona, even for community waters. It's $37 a year, and there's the website where you can buy it online. Be aware that there are many reservations in Arizona, and they all require separate licensing or permitting, uh, but you can buy them by the day, and they're relatively inexpensive, uh, normally under $10. Arizona Game and Fish offers an Arizona Trout Challenge, with, which I think is exciting. There are eight trout species stocked in Arizona, and they're listed here. And that is one of the trout challenges that you can try for. You have to get, I think, six of the eight to uh, meet the challenge. They also have a wild trout challenges, a wild trout challenge, which highlights fisheries with wild trout. And you have to catch at least four of the wild trout to uh, qualify there. I think when you get it, you get a certificate and, uh, and a nice sweatshirt. Here's the web page uh, from the uh, Arizona Trout Challenge website, which you can ac access through Arizona Game and Fish. And as you can see, it talks about the challenge and then it lists each of the uh, different species of trout available in Arizona and where you can go to catch them. It's very comprehensive. The state fish for Arizona is the Apache trout. It's a beautiful trout. Uh, it is, uh, there is limited opportunity uh, to catch it in uh, a narrow selection of waters, um, but when you do, it's really worth it. I encourage you to learn more about this great species. And here are some of the trout that have been caught, that I have caught, or um, Mike Falkenberry. Uh, you can see I catch the little guys, he got the big guy. Um, wild Apache from the West Fork of the Black, uh, also from the West Fork of Wild Brook, a stocked rainbow from Little Colorado River at X Diamond Ranch, which we'll talk more about later. And Mike wouldn't uh, divulge the honey spot where he got this wild brown, but it was up in the White Mountains. Arizona also has a uh, fishing regulations um, guidebook they put out annually and you can access that through their uh, website or you can find it at places like Sportsman's Warehouse. And they have a pretty comprehensive community fishing program which includes a guidebook. You can also access this on the website and they list where these community fishing waters are and when they are stocked throughout the year. As you can see, here are the Tucson uh, and Suarita lakes, which we'll talk about next. Tucson has um, three urban lakes and then one further south in Suarita. Uh, you have Kennedy here, Lakeside, uh, Silver Bell, and this is one down in Suarita. Uh, Kennedy is on the west side of I-10, Lakeside is on the uh, east side, more eastern part of the city, Midtown. Uh, Silver Bell is uh, in the Christopher Columbus Park over off of Silver Bell. And Suarita is in the uh, residential community of, uh, down in Suarita. Of course, we have fishing in Saddlebrook, but only on the HOA number one ponds. Um, they are open for fishing to Saddlebrook residents and their guests only. 
Uh, at Saddlebrook course hole number two, only during walking times may you fish. And at Tucson course hole number four, you can fish anytime during the day, um, but only on the southeast corner by the houses. And of course you can fish during walking times anywhere around the lake. Be aware that when the course is closed for maintenance, they do not want us out there fishing either. Uh, it's catch and release only, barbless hooks. And uh, in answer to a question during the live broadcast, no watercraft except for that remote controlled, wading or swimming is allowed in these ponds per HOA regulations. Arizona Game of Fish also has a great uh, fish and boat app on its website. It's uh, pretty comprehensive. It gives uh, topographical information and helps you locate the fish and access points. I encourage you to go to the Arizona Game and Fish website and check out, uh, just kind of browse through the site and, and see what you can see. Uh, Game and Fish divides the state up into um, these sections, I guess uh, seven sections that are named and then we'll call the other one the Navajo reservations, even though part of that is Apache County, but it's Navajo reservation. And um, we're gonna talk about each of those now. Uh, the Southeast includes Tucson and points uh, South and East. Um, Rose Canyon Lake on Mount Lemon at uh, something like 8,000 feet. This is a picture of Rose Canyon here on the top. Um, it's a beautiful little lake, Alpine Lake, uh, which sometimes uh, often is uh, very heavily pressured and unfortunately sees a fair amount of trash uh, that they do try to keep up with, but it has been discouraging to me to see the trash up there at times. Uh, I have caught um, trout up there, uh, but um, not had great success, um, but it is a beautiful place to go. Um, down east of us is uh, by Safford is Dankworth, Dankworth Lake, Roper Lake, Riggs Flat Lake, Clough Ranch Ponds, and Fry Mesa Reservoir. Uh, Riggs Flat and Fry Mesa are up in the mountains, uh, uh, I think up uh, by Mount Graham. And this uh, Dankworth Pond photo is shown here. Uh, important to note that Roper Lake also has a great campground, which you can camp out while you fish. And uh, Roper Lake, according to um, Jeff Collins, has big bass. And uh, Mike Falkenberry says, Fry Mesa Reservoir is nice, but be sure you have a four by four with lots of clearance to get up there. According to Arizona Game of Fish, fish available in these areas include rainbows, Gila trout, you can read the rest of it there. Um, Jeff Collins also likes Aravaca, says it is best to catch the big bass. Now Jeff likes to float tubes, so keep in mind that uh, a lot of these lakes would probably uh, produce better for you if you are in some kind of um, boat. Um, Parker Canyon and Patagonia offer camping. Uh, at Parker Canyon, I've been down there. I recommend that you plan on boat fishing because it's pretty hard to fish from the shore with all the vegetation along the shore. Uh, and one of our speakers, I don't remember who was not impressed with Pina Blanca lately, said it had not been producing. Central, uh, the central region around Phoenix um, has 15 waters in its region urban fishing program. And, Mike Falkenberry was pretty complimentary about the opportunities offered in the urban fishing program up in the valley. The lakes in the region include Apache, Bartlett, Canyon, Roosevelt, and Saguaro, along with many, many others. Uh, fish, fish species uh, include those listed here. And uh, the Salt and Verde rivers have bass, sunfish, catfish, chub, carp, and rainbow trout. Uh, in the winter uh, for the Verde. I think the salt uh, manages to maintain trout in certain points at various times during the uh, summer, during the year because of the cold tailwaters that come out of um, Saguaro Lake. But the upper left here is Salt River at one of the uh, access points, uh, one of the parking areas, Blue Point, and then uh, Salt River at the confluence with the Verde River at another uh, parking area, Fondy Sutton. Uh, the bottom left is Roosevelt Lake, and then we have a shot of Saguaro Lake. Uh, Colorado River Southwest um, has some big waters, uh, Lake Havasu, um, the Colorado River, 
Um, there's really no trout in this region. It's too warm. Um, but the Colorado River offers opportunity for flathead catfish and trophy largemouth bass. Colorado River Northwest region from Lake Havasu to Las Vegas to Page. Of course, the uh, premier place to fish here is Lee's Ferry, um, but there are uh, many other opportunities such as Lake Havasu, Lake Powell, Lake Mead, Lake, Lake Mojave. You can see a variety of fish are in these waters. And at Lee's Ferry, uh, the best fishing and scenery, uh, according to both of our panelists, uh, is via the boat up the river, um, although that can uh, cost you up to $500 with a tip for the guide. Uh, they say it really is worth it if you can uh, afford to do that. There is a walk-in area by the boat ramp at Lee's Ferry, but be careful because the current can be swift and both our panelists recommended not um, going into the water very deep at all. You're going to fish up closer to the shore, so you want to fish your way out because those fish aren't going to be holding out there in the heavier water, deeper, heavier water. So, um, yeah, there's no need to get, you know, waist deep in that place. Get up to your calf and fish the little pocket waters on the edge. Uh, but yeah, you're, you're correct, Linda. It's, uh, it, it, it can be a little intimidating for somebody who's a, uh, intermediate to beginning in the waiting department. So probably if you were going to go up there on your, on your own and you're not super experienced, you might want to make sure you have somebody else with you. As you're Good waiting idea. in. Um, Jeff, you want to comment on Lee's Ferry or any of these other? Well, he, he gave great advice at Lee's Ferry in the walk-in area. You don't want to go out. There's no reason to go out deep. I, I just, sometimes I don't even go in the water. I just get them little pockets along the edge. But if you ever go up there, I really highly suggest taking a boat ride up with a guide. Get three people and you can share a boat because very rarely you're fishing out of the boat. They stop at different bars and you fit, you get out in the water and fish. So you can get save a lot of money with three people to a boat. Uh, it's kind of expensive if you go by yourself. So. Yeah, it's about $400 plus a tip. So yeah. that kind of a going rate, I think. But it, it's a once in a lifetime. The scenery is just fantastic. Yeah. That's and awesome. also for another trout water, which used to be fantastic, is Willow Beach over at Mojave. And uh, since they put striped bass now, the striped bass just sit out there waiting for the, the trout to come in the water. But occasionally they catch a big trout. There. And it, it, it was very comparable to Lee's Ferry as a trout fishery at one time. Okay, cool. Okay, North Central. Um, uh, there's a lot of lakes up in this area um, and the Verde River, which offers, uh, you can see uh, flathead, um, catfish and round tailed chub. Lake Mary, I fished there once um, and it was very, very windy and very cold. And as usual, I had no luck. Um, and Oak Creek, I also fished once, but I had no idea what I was doing. And if I went back there, I would get a uh, guide. Um, this, uh, Bottom left is Oak Creek and uh, at the um, Sliding Rock State Park. And this one is actually one I came along uh, just by chance. It's, um, it's a place that has the, uh, a Winslow. It's close to Winslow, this particular water. And uh, it was pretty, but no, didn't, didn't get anything there either. It's good, mm -hmm. I like just casting and sitting and looking at pretty places. You guys, anything? Uh, I fished uh, Oak Creek quite a bit. Uh, it, it has a lot of wild uh, wild rainbows and wild uh, browns. And uh, I heard they just put Gila trout in it. So uh, it, it, it's a tough, it, it's tough to read it, but you, you can, if you get off alone, I mean, you'll find pockets and you'll catch fish. You just have to be real patient. And don't we go do. during, uh, don't go on the weekends, right? Don't go on the weekends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so Dead Horse Park is actually pretty uh, 
interesting fishery. It's pretty well stocked. Uh, the Verde River runs right through there. So there's some smaller uh, small mouth in there and trout. That's not a bad place to go fish. Uh, very intermediate to beginning uh, fly fisher friendly. You can take pontoons out onto some of those uh, waters as well. Uh, there's another one up there that's just off of the 17 called Wet Beaver that has a lot of smallmouth and stock trout in it. That's not a bad place. And then um, I pretty much concur with everybody on Oak Creek. I've, I've been there quite a few times. It's a, it's kind of a finicky fishery. I think it gets a lot of pressure and um, it can just be very busy. And, and I think that's, that's a, uh, a general uh, caution or criticism for a lot of uh, Arizona's desirable waters, especially moving waters, is there's a lot of pressure, right? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And I think Mike told me, if you, somebody told me, I think it was Mike, said if you can fish in Arizona and catch fish, you can probably fish anywhere because there's just <laughs> a lot of pressure here and there's not a lot of water to do it in. Uh, you're going to have to, you're going to have to learn good techniques to catch fish here. So, and part of that is being willing to go for a walk sometimes and walk away from the parking lot. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, it's, this is a good training ground, uh, proving ground, but it can be difficult. So don't get frustrated. It's just the more experience you have, the better you you'll get at it. Okay. Um, the, and now we're getting to the real meat of uh, good fishing, right? Mojo and Rim, this is uh, one of Mike's uh, prime spots. Uh, I think this one down here is, um, this one is Woods Canyon, and this one might be Willow, I'm not sure, but uh, most of these lakes are at the 7,000 foot or higher level. And uh, they do get a lot of pressure from folks in the valley because they're pretty close. Um, and some of the waters are on reservation, so you have to make sure that you've got the right licenses. Over to you guys. I'm not that experienced with that area. All right, so this is, uh, this is kind of my bed, bread and butter. So, you know, first is, is there, I'll give a little overview. If anyone has any questions, please, Feel free to interrupt me. There's quite a few lakes up there from Knoll Lake to uh, Blue Ridge Reservoir to uh, uh, Black Canyon uh, Reservoir to Willow Springs uh, and Woods Canyon. Uh, the reservoirs are stocked pretty heavily in the summer. Uh, my favorite time to fish them is right before they ice over and right after they ice off. Uh, pontoon works pretty it can be very effective up there but um especially on willow springs and woods canyon there's there's good uh fishing from the shore if you don't want to get in a bump in a pontoon um the reservoirs are like i said they're heavily stocked it's a high use area um really what you like you know if i like to fish them it's when you get to that ice off and you get holdover fish that are, you know, put some size on. Uh, they have tiger trout, I think, as well as rainbows. And I've heard rumors of still being some brown trout in Woods Canyon, although I've not seen them in years and years. Um, uh, and then in Woods Canyon, now they have a, a uh, green sunfish in there. And in Willow Springs, there are smallmouth and largemouth and green sunfish. So it's quite a diverse population of uh, fish, especially in Willow Springs. Um, and then in Payson, the town of Payson itself, it's got a nice urban lake there. Uh, green Valley Parks, I think is what it, it's called. Uh, again, a very nice place. It's very well stocked. It's a very scenic park and it's very, um, pretty sanitary for an urban water compared to what I see in Phoenix. So clean, pretty environment. Um, uh, the, the meat and potatoes of what I do up there is mostly streams. So uh, Tonto, the, you have the Tonto River and the Verde River 
watersheds there close. So the East Birdie um, going up to, towards the, uh, the its headwaters, they've stocked Gila trout in there and a couple other crossings. So you can go catch Gila's and some uh, wild browns. Uh, and all of those little creeks up in there that are tributaries to it, if they have water, they usually have fish uh, with some varying degree of size. Uh, my favorite is Canyon Creek, uh, although Canyon Creek is probably the most pressured water because it has the easiest access. And it's also got a, uh, you know, for Arizona, they call it a blue ribbon trout stream. And from the OW uh, Ranch Bridge down to the reservation is catch and release, artificial fly and lure, single barblets. So there are, I caught two fish last year in that water that were 20 to 21 inches. Um, it's an exceptionally fun dry fly stream, um, but it's very demanding on presentation. Uh, so Canyon Creek is kind of that, it's a, a difficult, creek to fish. Uh, casting is pretty easy on it. Um, there are some open areas, uh, so it's not terribly terribly canopied until you get to the upper sections. Uh, and then you have Tonto Creek and Christopher Creek, which are also what I call kind of high use areas, um, high stock, but each one of those have a, a good population of wild brown trout. And Christopher, specifically, as you go more upstream, has wild rainbows and wild birds. Um, and then there's a couple of creeks that are a little uh, more difficult to get to, Hagler Creek, uh, Hagler Creek, however you want to pronounce it. Um, and there are some significant fish in that creek, but it's also like fishing in a canyon. It's, it's very difficult access-wise. Um, your major bugs are going to be uh, blue-winged olives. You know, you're talking about betas. There are some March browns, which are a bigger mayfly, and then a lot of caddis. So um, always have some elk hair caddis or whatever your favorite caddis pattern is from a dry, and then whatever your, your favorite caddis keeper is. Uh, a hare's ear works well. There's one called a holy grail that I like a lot. And then terrestrials, so uh, hoppers, beetles, and ants should always, in, in whatever water you fish, because um, they don't hatch per se, they just end up in the water. So, you know, fish don't key in during a certain time for terrestrials in my experience. But it's fun water, it can be very challenging, but I'll send Linda a picture of a, a nicer brown that I took out of, that I didn't take, but I, I caught out of Canyon Creek, so, um, and she could put it on your Facebook page or whatever, but there are five pound trout in all of those streams that I've made. Wow. Well, that's encouraging. All we gotta do is wait for the ice to melt. Yep. Um, it's, you know, some of them are a little easier to access and some are a little more difficult, but Tano Creek, I think, is right there off the 260. It's the easiest one. Uh, Christopher Creek has some easier access upstream. Uh, I'm generally throwing a shorter uh, three weight, four weight, seven and a half foot, eight foot in those varieties to, you know, you know just because it, it is a little tighter casting. Uh, the other thing is the fish, especially if you get a wild rainbow or a wild brown in there, they are spectacular. They are very, very beautiful fish. The, the substrate, meaning the rock color and the, the color of the, uh, the sand in the bottom of those streams is so vivid that those trout take on those characteristics. They, they are some gorgeous fish. And I'm rambling. So does anyone have any questions? So Mike, uh, are these are these all on open uh, areas that you can fish or do you have to go on reservations? So on the reservation, the only part of the reservation there is Lower Canyon Creek uh, does run into the reservation. 
All right, so all um, these places you're talking about are primarily open to the public. You got a, yeah, you get a fishing license and um, aren't affiliated to drive on a dirt road and you're pretty well set. Okay. Um, Mike, I know you talked about Canyon Creek, Christopher, Tonto, Chevron Creek. Did you like that or not? Uh, Chevron Creek is phenomenal. The, yeah. the, the issue that most people have with Chevron is access. And it's not because it's private or reservation. It's just a long walk down into the canyon and then a long walk back out of the canyon. So Chevron Lake and that main June, July is a very productive dry fly lake. Um, they will come up and eat hoppers. If you hear cicadas, then that is a phenomenal fishery. The only problem is, is you know, you either walk down by the dam or you walk in by the, by the inlet or you go to Telephone Ridge Road or some of those spots. It can be, it's a pretty arduous uh, walk to get down there. So Mike, so either of you guys, how many run-ins have you had with rattlesnakes? Because uh, I, you know, I, I uh, see um, Cinda Howard with her dog all the time um, up in uh, the White Mountains. And, uh, you know, he's getting bit, seems like every other trip she goes out on. Are, have you had much experience with rattlesnakes while you're out fishing? Uh, I, I see snakes on occasion. Uh, I'm not a I'm not a little gentleman, so when I'm walking on a trail, I think that they're they're fairly aware of my presence. So I don't sneak up on them uh, like a dog or you know something like that. Um, Canyon Creek has a decent population of what they call the Arizona black rattlesnake, but they're very they're 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 a somewhat docile snake, meaning that. They're not going to chase you. If you walk around them, they're fine. Um, and I, I found that with the, uh, the ring-tailed rattlesnake or the timber rattlesnake as well. If I just give them a wide berth, and you're talking about one out of every 25 trips, maybe I see a snake. Okay. So twice a summer. Okay. Jeff, you had, any, had him chase you down in your float tube? I did. Oh, no. I didn't know they. I didn't know rattlesnakes could swim. And yeah. they can. <laughs> uh, at Aravac, I had one swimming around me for a while. I, I finally just moved out of the area, but very rarely do you see them. Yeah, I saw. I saw one uh, swimming across. Uh, I think Oak Creek in a video. So. Wow. Okay, not to scare anybody off, but you know, just always be vigilant about that. I guess. Okay, now my favorite place, because it's where I have the most experience <laughs> fishing for trout, because I have no experience anywhere else, is um, the White Mountains. Uh, you're fishing at 6,500 to 10,000 feet, lots and lots of places to go. I've fished around Greer on the Little Colorado. Um, this one, the picture here on the, uh, kind of in the middle left is um, on the X Diamond Ranch, which is uh, stocked water and private water that you, uh, when you hire, hire the guide that she took me out there and I caught about 30 trout. Um, this one uh, on the far right is the West Fork of the Black and that's where I caught the Apache and Brook trout. Uh, barely a sliver of water, but it was enough and there was a lot of overhang, um, which the fish hit under. And then this right here is um, at the uh, end of Greer, uh, parking area where I guess they stock trout every so often and I didn't know that and I was brand new and I was catching fish after fish and I thought wow I'm really good at this but um, th that of course was not the case but that was a pretty place to go as well. So uh, Jeff why don't you go first you got what have you done up here? Pretty much everything uh, that was where I had the trout unlimited projects mainly uh, when we did our Apache trout work uh, I've fished a lot of those. Well, I worked in that area. Uh, actually, if you go below the lakes in uh, the thing Greer, the Bunch River and Tunnel, mm -hmm. nobody nobody's aware of it, but there's the little Colorado flows through there, and there's little trails that get on it. And there, there are some huge grounds in there. It's hard to fish. There's a lot of uh, timber laying around, but uh, it's pretty good. And if you don't, it, it's about a two mile hike in. Uh, then around uh, 
what's that area? It's south of uh, Big Lake. There's a, a creek there that it's probably the best Apache trout, wild Apache trout creek up there now. It's Not called Fish, Fish Creek. Okay. Fish Creek. Yeah. And it's uh, a tributary of the Black. Uh, it, there's a road that goes right along it for about a mile dirt road and it's an easy dirt road it's not a, a hard uh, four-wheel drive road or anything you can find it on the maps or if you want i'll send you uh the area it is on the forest service map if you want but i was i, I was talking to the biologist up there and he says it's better than ever there so nobody fishes it <laughs> cool mike You're muted, Mike. There we go. Uh, I have a decent amount of, uh, I was born in Shola. So I have fished a lot of the small streams up there and, and the lakes. So one of the parcels in the map that you saw from a region is the White Mountain Lake. Well, it's the White Mountain Apache tribe. So there are a significant amount of reservoirs and moving water on there. Uh, that if you go to their site, you pay the $9 a day to fish, um, they can be phenomenal fisheries as well. Uh, one of them is Christmas tree lake. Um, and I don't know, Jeff has probably fished Christmas tree. It's a, it's a very, very fun, probably one of the more beautiful lakes in, in the state. And they like to eat dry flies early in the season. Yeah. And that's on the White Mountain Apache tribe. Uh, Holly Lake is uh, pretty renowned for large brown trout, um, as is Horseshoe Seneca and some of the other uh, reservoirs. The uh, Little Colorado uh, section really runs on public property through the Big Lake area, um, but the headwaters of the White River and the Black, Black River are... Um, on uh, the Apache tribe. So very good fishing outside of what you would get in the national forest, which is uh, the West Fork where you fished, Linda, very beautiful uh, opportunity for brown trout, uh, Apache trout above the barrier, brook trout throughout. Um, and then also uh, a, uh, the East Fork of the Black, uh, has a couple of tributaries right after you get out of uh, Big Lake driving over to Alpine. Uh, the East Fork of the Black has some of the largest brown trout I have ever seen. Um, it, you know, both of those creeks were pretty impacted by the, the, the wallow fire at some point. What was that, Jeff? Seven, eight years ago? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but uh, the tributaries to those active like nurseries and brown trout in there are significant. Um, not real great dry fly fishing for those fish, but there are a lot of crayfish in that water. So crawdad patterns, leech patterns work pretty well. Um, and then if you're really, if you're really a, you know, beginning fly fisherman, Silver Creek can be a very fun place to go and to learn how to cast and to mend uh, from April for, or from October 1st to April 1st, that whole section of Silver Creek that's on state land is catch and release only. And they stock a significant amount of big fishing. And by this time of the year, they get educated to where they'll still eat, but they're going to make you do uh, a good presentation, good drift, change flies. But that can be a fun place to go for some sizable fish. Um, and the access there is pretty easy walking. You're not hiking in. Uh, the East Fork of the Black is a hike in. It's, you know, the substrate changes between the Mogollon Rim and the White Mountain. You get a lot more volcanic activity up there. And so it's a bunch of ragged, jagged, jagged uh, lava rock. It can be rough on shoes and definitely rough on knees if you fall. So. Um, one of my favorite places on the planet, uh, Little Colorado at Weeks, uh, the X Diamond, 
there's some good water above her property. Like uh, Jeff was saying, if you hike down below river and bunch reservoir, there's, there's nice fishing in there. I, I have a question about that because I, I have hiked down below a little teeny ways below river reservoir. Um, you go like, there's like a dam kind of thing that lets a little water out and th there was private property then said not to cross it and all that. I couldn't go very far. Huh, so we... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I go in on the creeks like Rosie Creek and stuff. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to tell me any secrets here. I just wondered what, how you dealt with that. Not, okay. It's a tough walk. <laughs> okay. And, and if you, um, if you're at Winks and you get a cabin there, you can just walk up on, and walk through the gate. All of that is national forest above Winks. So that's all what, open to fishing. What is that you're saying, um, Mike Weeks? Uh, the X Diamond. Oh, okay, X Diamond. Okay, yeah, that's their name. Sorry. Yeah, Wink Kringler is the owner. Right. I've known her for decades <laughs> now. Yeah, um, I, I met her when I went out there, met her very briefly. Um, last time I went up that way, um, they weren't allowing fishing um, up above uh, the X Diamond in that section of the Little Colorado. Mm. I don't know why. I wonder why. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I would always question that and call the call the ranger station because that's not, you know, depending on who you get the information from, it, it could be hearsay because they, you know, if they close down the forest for, for camping and fires, then that's usually <laughs> um, on billboards and light up signs all over the place. Other than that, I don't, you know, I don't see them closing that down often. Okay. Um, well, we are now to the. Uh, I'll ask our presenters. Do you guys did you, do you guys have anything that I missed with our slides that you want to talk about before I open it up to questions? You know, there's an area I used to work in on the Navajo Reservation, which is the very top, uh, the northeast corner of the state, and. Nobody ever fishes there, but you can get uh, Indian permits to fish it. See, that's that big white area. Yeah. <laughs> top. And there is some uh, fantastic lakes up in there. Whiskey Lake is one. It's at the top of a mountain. You'd need four-wheel drive to get to that. Uh, but there's another one called Wheat Fields, which is off of a main highway up there. And there are some huge browns and rainbows in there. And like I said, nobody fishes it. Uh, a permit for the day is like five bucks. So, so you uh, just go to the Navajo website or something? Not the Yeah, Navajo Indian website and look up fishing. And yeah, you'll see all the little lakes up there. There's a lot, just a lot of little lakes. And uh, every one of them has fish in it. They just don't talk about it. <laughs> But I used to work there when, when I worked for the power company. I was a microwave technician, so I got off-road a lot and found a lot of them ponds. That's cool. What is the altitude up there? Uh, well, Whiskey Lake is about 10,000 feet. Okay. Uh, Wheat Fields is about seven because it's down towards the towns there. Okay. Thank okay. you. Sure. Any uh, Mike, you have anything you'd like to add to the conversation? Um, so I, I think we've covered the water pretty well. Um, I, you know, when people ask why, you know, why they don't go and catch fish, I think the main issue is just not getting out of it. Um, but the secondary issue is, you know, casting. So if you're, if you're having issues catching fish, you know, watch some casting videos. I know Eric over at Dry Creek does some casting uh, help Saturday morning, socially distanced sometimes. Um, but don't don't be afraid to become a, a proficient caster. Uh, fish will eat all different types of flies um, if they're presented right. And, but they won't, you could have a the exact, 
right fly on, but if you have drag or you can't get the drift um, or can't make the cast without spooking the fish, it can become difficult. So, you know, I know that there's, there's all different levels of uh, people probably in the club, but if you have somebody who's uh, an exceptional caster, have them work with your, um, with your membership. Cause that makes, that makes yeah. the fishing easier. That's, that's great advice. And we do have some, uh, some people who are very good at that among other things. So thanks, that's a good, helpful hint. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, are there any other questions from the, from the audience for our wonderful presenters? Just a quick question on the licensing. Is the licensing done uh, on a 12 month basis? In other words, if you, if you get a license in, uh, in October, does it go from October to October or is it always a calendar year? It rolls. It rolls. Okay. It so if you come if you come in October, then it runs the next the next October. Yeah, right. and it's and it's I think it's thirty five bucks. Isn't that right, guys? I think for the basic license. Yeah, it, that that includes the state and the urban. Okay. And uh, and you can buy it right on the website um, and print off a little card to keep in your wallet or whatever. And then when you go to the White Mountains, you got you have to go to the reservation website or uh, how do you get those licenses? When, when uh, there's, uh, go ahead. Um, sometimes you can get them online, but there's a couple of stores that carry them. The Honda Sports Shop up there in Honda has okay. them. All right. I don't know, Jeff. When was the last time you were able to get one online? I I never get them online. I yeah. Just there's go up a there place in Springerville. I usually get it. It's a little yeah. okay. hardware store. There's and you basically buy it for the. Di you, you basically buy it for the day oh, yeah. or the, the week or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can do daily. I don't know if they have a multi-day, uh, um, but they have annual passes too. So okay. daily or okay. by year. Yeah. If you're going to spend a lot of time in the White Mountains, it's, you know, it's probably worth it to get an annual pass. I think they're a little bit pricey at a hundred bucks, but there's a lot of water up there. Uh, the whole white water or the whole white river watershed is on uh, the Apache homeland up there. And as far as I know, it's closed to COVID right now. So, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things that's kept me from going back to um, Lee's Ferry is the Navajo Nation has been locked down and I just haven't felt comfortable mm -hmm. going back up there. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing to think about right now. Okay, anything else, guys? Um, I can't thank uh, Mike and Jeff enough. This has been awesome. This is like, uh, we've, we've had ongoing um, presentations from club members. Uh, Dean Umimoto is our education committee chair and he's put on some, uh, with the help of others, some presentations. But this is, you guys are our first outside uh, expert presenters. And we really, really thank you for your time. And like I said, I'll get your address from you and, and get you a, a, a hat. And uh, we hope to be talking in the future. Thank you very much. Yeah. Great. Thank you so thank much, you guys. Very much. Thank you very much, Buzz. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Enjoy You're very it. welcome. Bye-bye. And if you, guys have, thank you. if you guys have any other questions, you can email them to uh, Linda and she'll send them to me or give Linda, you can give your club members my email address if they, okay. if they have any further uh, questions. Thanks, Mike. Same here. You can yeah. give mine Thanks. out if you want. Thank Thanks, you very Jeff. much, guys. Really, really do appreciate that. And we'll have to have you out to catch a uh, big catfish in Saddlebrook someday. <laughs> oh, I'd love that. Okay. All right. Ooh, Take care. Fun. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.